It's a normal sunny day in medieval England, and at the corner of the street, a group of men gather around a man suspected to have stolen a bag of wheat. One of the bigger guys holds his hands behind his back and pins him to the floor while the others stand behind him. Did you know that citizen arrest was first established in medieval England, where the citizens had permission to arrest or apprehend a criminal to prevent escape before the police arrived? While citizen arrest is encouraged and seen as a good thing, some cases have ended badly for the supposed criminal or the concerned citizen. Hannah Payne is an example of how illegal citizen arrest can cause more harm than good. In the case of Hannah Payne, it is safe to say that it did not end well for the citizen who was illegally detained. Today we will be focusing on the case that was brought to court on 7th May 2019, but has yet to be concluded to this day. It has been a trying four and a half years for both parties involved as the victim's family just wants to get their justice so they could get closure. No matter the verdict declared by the preceding judge, it surely would not bring Kenneth Herring back to to life, but we hope it brings the family peace. The Dreadful Day A Tuesday morning in 2019 started as a normal day for both parties involved in such a tragic case, but all these changed due to a minor hit and run caused by Kenneth Herring after he crashed into a car along the intersection of Riverdale Road and Forest Parkway. A cop member who was off duty during this incident after seeing it placed a call to 911 immediately to alert them of the incident, and Kenneth Herring was said to have stayed at the crash scene for almost 20 minutes, awaiting the arrival of the police. But after a while, he drove off, which led Hannah Payne to place another call to 911. During her conversation with the 911 operator, she was asked the tag number of the car and Hannah, seeing that she needed to give the police more information, decided to give chase to the car against the advice of the 911 operator, who asked her to remain in place for her safety. But Hannah trying to be of help gave chase to the pickup car, and after relaying the tag number of the car to the police, she went ahead to block Kenneth Herring with her Jeep, which caused another collision and blocked traffic flow. Not only that, Hannah went as far as confronting the 62-year-old and threatening him to get down from his car. Many onlookers reported that Kenneth Herring was behaving in a suspicious way, twitching and swaying which led them to believe he was intoxicated but further research proved this to be false. After the crash with Hannah's Jeep, Kenneth Herring remained sitting in his car, while Hannah left her Jeep and went to confront him screaming that he should get down from the car because she was performing a citizen arrest, but Mr. Herring did not budge from his car. This was when things took a turn for the worse, because shortly after, a gunshot was heard and the 62-year-old was seen with a gaping hole in his stomach. The case. After the police arrived on the scene, it was captured on body cam that Hannah was seen handing over her weapon to the officer. One of the officers was seen asking who was shot and who shot the gun, while the other officer sprung to action on seeing Mr. Herring leaning forward on his steering wheel with blood all around. Mr. Herring was rushed to the hospital, but unfortunately he lost his life due to the gunshot wound which led to a massive blood loss. Hannah was detained on the count of malice murder and was made to appear in court on Wednesday morning, 7th of May, 2019. During her first hearing, there were different accounts of the incident. Some witnesses came forward and testified to seeing Hannah leave her car and go to Kenneth Herring's car, where she was recorded by a truck driver banging on his windows. door forcing him to get down from his car but Mr. Kenneth remained sitting with his window, slightly rolled down and out of anger. Hannah drew her 9 mm gun and shot him in the stomach. The footage provided by the truck driver ended when he heard the gunshot, so there was no recording of Hannah shooting him, but in the footage the gun was seen in Hannah's hand. During the trial, various witnesses were brought forward, some of which agreed for their names to be mentioned but some preferred to remain anonymous. One of the witnesses brought forward was Nicole Jackson, who told WSBT that she saw Hannah Payne wrestle with 62-year-old Mr. Herring. After she shot him, she said, now you need an ambulance. She was talking to him. She wasn't talking to, she was fighting with him. And I felt like, she felt like she couldn't handle him the way she wanted to handle him, so she pulled You're out right, of the right. window. After which she heard a gunshot. She was outside the window shooting at him, correct? That's what you said? That's correct. 
and she could hear Hannah calling the 911 operator for help. Her attorney, Mr. Tucker, claimed his client was disheveled with a ripped shirt, and she had scratches all over her. He claimed both their DNA should be on the gun because they were both struggling for it. Another witness who decided to remain anonymous claimed she saw Hannah go back to her car and get a change of clothes before the police arrived, which made the murder seem like a preconceived act on Hannah's part, and not self-defense as she had earlier testified in court. Some other witnesses claimed that Payne was in the right, as she witnessed the victim argue and exchange numerous harsh words until Payne reached for her firearm to defend herself from the victim. After many testimonies, the case was adjourned to the 28th of May 2019 due to the many different witness recounts and the delicate nature of the case. During the next hearing, on the 28th of May 2019, more pieces of evidence were brought forward, which included a live recording of the incident by another citizen. In this recording, it is seen that Kenneth Herring never left his car, and Payne can be seen banging and shouting outside his car before she pulled the trigger of her 9mm, which was the weapon used to kill Mr. Herring. Another piece of evidence was brought forth by the state of Georgia that Kenneth Herring, after waiting for 20 minutes at the crash scene, drove away because he was having a diabetic episode and wanted to get him himself to the hospital, seeing that the crash was a minor one with no one hurt, and this was when Hannah gave chase in her car. This episode was also what led some to believe he was intoxicated because of his twitching and swaying as he tries to leave the scene of the hit and run. This evidence ruled out the accusation of the victim being drunk, which led to the first crash, rather making it a case of medical emergency by the victim, who was trying to save his life but ultimately lost it. After the DNA test was conducted on the gun, it was discovered that Hannah's prints were were all over the gun, but Kenneth's result came out inconclusive, which ruled out him shooting himself accidentally during an altercation between him and the accused that never happened due to the footage brought forth as evidence to the court. And an interview conducted with Christine Herring, wife of the deceased who is survived by a stepdaughter and two step-grandchildren whom he will never see grow up. She tells the interviewer amidst tears and with a broken heart, I think she needs to go to jail because she committed murder. Recent trial. Hannah Payne's case has been one with lots of twists and turns which has prolonged the case but hopefully the case will come to an end soon. The state of Georgia presented unprecedented cell phone and body camera footage to the jury last Friday. The accused, Hannah Payne, stands charged with the fatal shooting of 62-year-old Kenneth Herring after he fled a car crash in 2019. Prosecutors assert that Hannah Payne pursued and confronted Herring against the advice of 911 operators. The showcased body camera footage captures the chaotic scenes when Clayton County police arrived at the crash site. Payne is seen holding a gun and subsequently handing it over to the officers who were without gloves, and this makes racing Mr. Herring DNA inconclusive. The video also depicts at least one officer providing aid to Mr. Herring, while voices in the background question Payne's alleged shooting of Herring. The footage forms a critical part of the trial, shedding light on the events that transpired that day. According to Payne's legal representative, the Georgia correctional officer who testified on Wednesday instructed her to obtain the tag number. The defense contends that Mr. Herring assaulted Payne, justifying the shooting as an act of self-defense. Attorney Matt Tucker suggests that Payne might personally address the jury, sharing her perspective on the incident. Facing serious charges, Payne is accused of two counts of felony murder, malice murder, aggravated assault, false imprisonment, and three charges of weapons possession during a crime. The courtroom awaits further revelations as the trial unfolds. On the fourth day of the murder trial, Hannah Payne took the stand in her defense providing a detailed account of the events leading to the shooting of Kenneth Herring. Payne asserted that a state officer at the initial crash scene informed her of Herring's alleged intoxication. When Herring drove away, Payne, on the phone with 911, attempted to follow and update the dispatcher. During her testimony, Payne insisted she was not chasing Herring but providing information. She recounted the escalating confrontation with Herring, emphasizing her attempt to comply with the dispatcher's instructions. A recorded 911 call revealed the dispatcher at your advising pain not to pursue herring. All right, so we're going to be the guy that caused the accident who ran the red light is drunk. And he got back in his car and he's looking like he's trying to drive away. Okay, can you get his bag number? <clears throat> Hold on, he's driving away. 
to which Payne claimed she interpreted as a suggestion, not a mandate. Describing the encounter, Payne detailed Herring grabbing her and the intense fear she experienced, ultimately leading to the shooting. Payne tearfully expressed her confusion during a subsequent police interview, highlighting her emotional state. The state's cross-examination focused on the dispatcher's instructions, attempting to establish non-compliance. Payne, however, maintained she perceived a distinction between following and staying near Herring for updates. After further examination, her hearing continued on Tuesday the 12th of December 2023. Here Hannah Payne was given the opportunity to speak to the jury in her plea. She reinstated what her attorney had said, which was she did not intend shooting, and all she wanted to do was provide more information for the police. Hannah Payne friends and family were given the opportunity to speak, and they all had great things to talk about Hannah, stating how she was not a racist and just a victim of circumstance which turned out poorly for her. The family of Mr. Herring also took the stand, and they wanted justice for their dead relative, stating that Hannah should be sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. Hannah was convicted of felony murder, malice murder, aggravated assault, false imprisonment, and three charges of weapons possession during a crime. Judge Jewel Scott bestowed some mercy on Payne, handing down a sentence of life with the possibility of parole for the murder of 62-year-old Kenneth Herring, whom she chased down and shot after he ran a red light in May 2019 and caused a minor car crash. She was also sentenced to eight consecutive years for false imprisonment and five consecutive years for possession of a firearm. This sentencing we hope was able to bring closure and peace to the victim's family. The incident of May 2019 affected two families drastically. We hope both families are able to move on and find peace. Click the next video on your screen to enjoy more content from us. If you are new, click the subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you don't miss our next update.